What if I told you Ukraine might already be jamming Russian satellites from the ground? Radar about to be jammed. Showing an amazing capability that most analysts didn't know that Ukraine had. But first, I'm getting reports that there might be an FSB spy in the area. If you see something, say something. Today, we're doing something a little different. We're not just identifying gear, we're asking the tougher question. Is Ukraine already using US counter-communications technology to punch holes in Russian satellite links? And if so, how did an antenna photo suddenly become the most interesting piece of hardware on the front? Spoiler. The truth sits squarely between a comms node and an electronic scalpel. And that gray zone is where the future of space warfare is being written. Hey friends, Wes O'Donnell here, Army and Air Force veteran, and today we're going to talk about something that's going to make Mr. Putin very unhappy. Oh, sad Putin, he's so sad, look at him. Hey, hey, snap, snap out of it, cheer up, boyo. It's not so bad. Okay, let's start with a photo. The image that sets this whole conversation off first ran in an interview with Colonel Ivan Pavlenko of Ukraine's Electronic Warfare Directorate. At a glance, analysts noticed the antenna's shape and its components look very similar to a tri-band satellite communications gateway. You know, a uh, type used by U.S. forces as a mobile node to link tactical users into a wider SATCOM network. Well, that resemblance is useful because it tells us what the box was probably designed to do, not necessarily what it was doing in that particular picture. But resemblance is not a smoking gun. A tri-band gateway links to geostationary satellites. It hands mission data off to a satellite, and it provides connectivity to remote command nodes. It is, in other words, a very handy courier for eyes and ears in the sky. But that same physical footprint can also host transmitters that deny those satellite links instead of bridging them. When you put similar hardware in reverse, you swap a modem for a jammer. You reconfigure timing and power and the box goes from connectivity to denial. That engineering flip is easier than you'd think, and that's what makes the photo interesting. So let's get specific about the US systems that make headlines in this category. The Space Force has been fielding a family of counter communication systems and tools codenamed Meadowlands, among others. Built by L3 Harris, these are ground-based jammers designed to deny satellite communications to adversaries like Russia and China. And in 2025, the service began formal acceptance and fielding of mobile Meadowlands demonstrators. They are not science fiction. They are a deployed capability. The crucial point is this. The footprint and the operations picture for Meadowlands and related CCS tools broadly match the technical profile of the antenna seen in Ukraine, meaning the hardware could plausibly host either a gateway or a jammer, or in some configurations, both. But hardware alone doesn't win the argument, so we need context on who's operating what. Ukraine's electronic warfare forces have been openly building capability and sharing that they're moving into more advanced space and spectrum operations. Colonel Pavlenko has spoken publicly about expanding Ukraine's EW reach, and Ukrainian units have increasingly shown capacity to both defend their own comms and degrade Russian systems. That institutional appetite, combined with battlefield necessity, think repeated Russian use of satellite links for reconnaissance and comms, makes it logical that Kyiv would pursue methods to blunt those advantages. In short, the institutional will is present, the tactical motivation is obvious, and the photo is consistent with that intent. So how would this actually work if Ukraine were jamming satellites? Well, a counter communication system on the ground emits energy into the direction of a satellite or its downlink footprint overwhelming the satellite's receiver or its ground terminal. If done with precision, you can deny an adversary the ability to transmit or receive in a given band over a given area. That's how Meadowlands and similar systems are architected. They're not blunt, area-wide noisemakers. They are surgically precise. They can be mobile, and they can be turned on and off depending on the tactical need. The operational effect is immediate. Lost telemetry, interrupted command links, blind sensors, and the second order effect is strategic. 
it forces the target to shift to other, less capable, less secure comms paths. But precise jamming at distance is technically hard, so doing it well requires not just a dish, but support. Good intelligence on satellite footprints, timing, power control, and safe rules to avoid fratricide. That's where Western cooperation becomes relevant in this conversation. Mobile SATCOM gateways and jammers aren't consumer gear. They come with doctrine and with software and with training. Oh, and integration points. If Kiev is operating a system like this effectively, it likely isn't in isolation. There are chains of training, perhaps technology transfers, and probably some form of operational advice from partners who have been developing these tools for years. What I'm trying to say is the U.S. Space Force and or the CIA is advising Ukraine here. That doesn't mean U.S. boots on the ground technically, but it means shared know-how, classified help, and months of training that can turn an antenna into an instrument of denial. Now, the skeptical corner will point out the obvious. Jamming a satellite can be detected, it can be attributed, and it's escalatory. Russia will notice if its space links go dark, and it will look for the source. Now, there are political and operational risks, so Ukraine would have to weigh the immediate tactical benefit against potential strategic cost. But I think they're making the smart move, because who cares what Russia thinks? If Russia could escalate, they would have escalated by now. But war is a calculus of risk and return. And when your adversary uses satellites to coordinate strikes, to guide drones, and to maintain battle space awareness, denying those links can be the difference between survival and catastrophe. Ukraine has shown it has a willingness to accept tactical risk to protect its cities and its forces. Denying space-based sensors is a logical extension of that approach. So what moves this from plausible to probable? Well, first, the photo itself, which Defense Express and others have analyzed, fits the profile of a tri-band gateway or similar footprint. And it appeared in a video tied directly to Ukraine's EW leadership. Second, Western public reporting confirms the existence and the fielding of Meadowlands class systems that perform counter communications. Third, Ukrainian electronic warfare units have shown increasing sophistication on the battlefield, from GPS denial to radio spectrum control, which implies the people and doctrine are in place to scale out into satellite denial. Put those three together, and you have a credible chain of inference. You still lack a signed admissions document, but military practice rarely hands out confessionals. So what does this mean for the battlefield? If Ukraine is operating counter communications tools, Moscow must plan for contested space, not just contested air and land. That forces Russia to disperse assets, rely more on hardware, fiber, and terrestrial links, increase electronic protection, and accept gaps in satellite coverage. For Kyiv, successful jamming buys time. It masks movements, and it degrades Russia's ISR at exactly the moment Ukraine most needs operational surprise. In a war driven by sensors and data, Momentary blindness can be decisive. So what should you watch next? Well, first, look for operational indicators. Sudden, localized loss of Russian SATCOM traffic, shifts to alternative comms, and public Russian complaints about mysterious interference. Second, watch for Ukrainian doctrine statements and training footage hinting at integrated EW and space work. Third, keep an eye on equipment footprints appearing in social media because the geometry of dishes and crates and cables often tells the true story a few days before the press release is due. Now, let me be blunt. If that antenna is simply a SATCOM node, it still matters. If it's also a jammer, it matters a lot more. Either way, Ukraine's move into counter communications marks the long expected evolution of the conflict from a fight over who can throw more metal into the sky to a fight over who can control the electromagnetic pathways that make modern war possible. In 2025, antennas aren't just for talking, they are for controlling what gets heard and in a fight where information is ammunition, control over the airwaves is a kind of munition in itself. I personally am very happy to see this piece of high-tech US equipment in Ukrainian hands. That's it for today, my friends. If you liked this breakdown, subscribing really is the best free way to support these videos. And as always, glory to Ukraine, glory to the heroes. Crimea is Ukraine.
<laughs> hey, Fat Tony, forget about it. Bada bing. I love this guy. Huh? <laughs> All right, this thing stinks, man. Let's get this guy out of here. <laughs>